Well, so this is, I believe I'm on episode 8, and after just a crushing loss to, to uh, Kansas last week on Can- on the Jayhawks' Hail Mary uh, to kind of end the game, we uh, we play Arkansas State this week. We're in week 6 now, and um, let's real quick, we'll look at the top stories around the country. So last week, it was LSU falling to Ole Miss at home, the Rebels. Lane Kiffin, in his first season with Ole Miss, tears up the defending national champions, 48-28. to It was 13-0 at halftime, uh, and so LSU was still in it. But then the third quarter, you can see Ole Miss. I mean, they just thir- – they, they were up 34-7 to going into the fourth quarter. Game was over at that point. So Ole Miss with a big win. Uh, it's LSU's first conference game of the season. And now Ole Miss puts themselves in the conversation for the Western Division in in, uh, in the SEC. So big win there, big game. LSU also now out of the college football playoff conversation, at least for now. Um, meanwhile, Wisconsin with a 34-31 win over Michigan. Kind of interesting to see how that's in. Oh, okay, so they were up. Michigan tried to make a comeback towards the end, but uh, too little too late. So Wisconsin with the win there over Michigan. Um this week, Ole Miss, they're going to try to follow up their win against LSU against Alabama. Uh, the Crimson Tide come in, ranked number seven. They're three and one. Alabama lost their first SEC game uh, to Georgia. So they need uh, they need a win. Ole Miss, if they want to uh, really put themselves into the conversation for the Western Division, they need a win against Alabama there. So big game. Um, hard to imagine Ole Miss beating LSU and Alabama back-to-back, but we'll see. Uh, Oregon and uh, Washington, big game this week. Washington is 3-0. and uh, They haven't played any Pac-12 opponents yet. They're, uh, we'll look and see. There's, yeah, they beat Michigan overtime first week. Uh, shut out an FCS opponent. Uh, not an overly impressive, but they still they beat Utah State 32-7. to So this week, their first game uh, in the Pac-12, they go at Oregon. Uh, meanwhile... Oregon uh, has played a Pac-10 opponent, uh, Colorado. Last week, they beat Colorado 35-23. Their only loss so far was to Ohio State. So, Oregon, they're ranked number 10. They still have a chance uh, to get into the college football playoff picture. But Washington can really propel themselves into that conversation if they can get a win in that game. Uh, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, big game right here. Two undefeated teams. Wisconsin, they're coming off of a win over Michigan. Um, looking at their schedule so far, they had the win over Arkansas. Uh, they had that. They were that was the game against Western Michigan where they were down twenty to nothing in halftime, clawed their way back in to win twenty one twenty. And then look at that same uh, same score at Wake Forest. So it, looking at these results, they kind of feel like a pretender. Um, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Kind of hard to call Notre Dame a pretender, but um, Wisconsin, on the other hand, they uh, beat Indiana to start the season, uh, crushed an FCS team 49-7, had a close win against Appalachian State, one of our future opponents, and then went to Michigan, got a win there. So uh, this should be an interesting game. As the, To be honest, both of these teams kind of look like pretenders from their results so far. Uh, so it could be a chance for them to kind of uh, out each other. We'll see. Uh, this and they also have Ohio State beating Rutgers 35 to 10. Buckeyes trying to climb back to the top spot in the ranking. Um, they are number two right now. Uh, Stanford uh, over UCLA 24 to 20. So the Cardinal are three and one, respectable record so far. Uh, and Florida all over Tennessee 41 to 20, uh, knocks off the Vols. Uh, that, that of course always is the um, the pace setter that game. Whoever wins that game is the pace setter in the SEC. It looked like it was a close game until the very end. Going into the fourth quarter, Florida was up. Uh, well, Tennessee led at halftime, 17-13. Then the Gators go up 20 to 17. Tennessee ties it on some Maglia's field goal, but then Florida slams the door shut in Knoxville with three touchdowns in a row to win the game, 41 to 20. Uh, big win for the Gators. So that is the uh, look around the top stories in the country. Top 25 polls. We'll uh, we'll just look at the coaches. Georgia, uh, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Auburn, Wisconsin. The top six are all undefeated. Then you've got Alabama, number seven. Clemson, number eight. Uh, Texas A&M, number nine at 4-0. and And then Oregon is number 10. 11 is Penn State. 
12, Florida, 13, LSU, 14, Texas, 15, North Carolina, 16, Ole Miss. Ole Miss jumped into the all the way up to 16 after their win against LSU. Of course, LSU was number four. Uh, Virginia Tech, number 17, Louisville, 18, Arizona State, 19, and then Iowa rounds out the top 20. 21, Washington slowly but surely creeping their way up. Utah uh, dropped after their loss to Cal. Looked like they lost 40 to 17. Big loss, but they dropped to 22nd. Michigan, uh, their second loss drops them down to number 23. Minnesota, number 24. And USC, 25. Uh, Kentucky and Iowa State dropped out of the top 25. Uh, some teams that are trying to, whatever, get in. You've got Cal, Cal Oklahoma State, Miami, TCU, Florida State, Washington State, and Kentucky. Uh, all right there on the cusp of being ranked looking at the heisman watch ely has finally moved up and yeah tavion the uh receiver from virginia tech is gone he is nowhere near the list now ely up to number one clemson's etienne is number two uh, on the list here uh running back from florida jumps into the top five lingard uh big game against tennessee 33 carries 190 yards two touchdowns uh also added 32 yards receiving and Najee harris from alabama uh, big day for him as well, 170 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, and then JT Daniels, the sophomore quarterback from Georgia, had a big game. Look at that Look at that line, 19 of 24 for 432 yards. Uh, six total touchdowns in the win over Louisiana Monroe. Um, not exactly a whatever um, power opponent, but still, um, good. No, it's a good uh, line of stats there. So that's your Heisman watch. As we try to keep a, keep an eye on that, um, players of the week. No way we had any players of the week in uh, college football. Sun Belt. Now nobody in the Sun Belt player of the week either. Um, real quick look at recruiting. So um, recruiting wise, yeah, we did have a good week. Actually, we signed a couple of players. They weren't great players, but we did sign uh, wide receiver Scott Carroll. He both of these guys were visiting, by the way. Um, so receiver that'll help. I think that means we don't technically have any more. No, we do need one more receiver. I thought, I guess we needed two. So we signed one. Um, and then we also signed uh, Larry Gooden, the defensive tackle. Um, pretty sure that was our only need. Yeah, on defense, aside from punter, but that's not really a defensive player. So uh, filled the need at defensive tackle. I still would like to have another defensive tackle or two. So I'm still working on those two defensive ends. Um We'll look at them, Courtney Price uh, and Robbie Brown. Uh, it's, the need is not as urgent, but for depth's sake, I'm going to keep going after these guys. And one of them might end up getting moved to defensive tackle. There's going to be some shuffling along the defensive line uh, in the offseason, probably. Um, I've also now started recruiting this cornerback, Terrence Hurd. I feel like I, this will be the first time I've actually put any points towards him. And I'm only losing 75 at a time right now. So... By my math, I should start gaining now on Air Force. Um, so, and again, this is a guy, I don't have a need per se at cornerback, but I would like some depth back there, uh, improve the overall talent. I've only got four cornerbacks on the roster, so um, I would like to sign at least one or two. And um, looking at Hamilton, I did jump to the lead. He was on a visit, if you've been paying attention, uh, James Hamilton. Um, he came in on the visit last week, got a big bump from that. So I'm in the lead now. Um, and it looks like it's going to come down to us in Kentucky. Bad news is he's got a visit with Kentucky, uh, in week 12. He's also got a visit with Iowa week 14, but as you can see, the, the I was way, way down the list and he's 95% locked. So pretty soon Iowa is going to be locked out. So uh, Kentucky is the issue. Um, I'm in week six. So it's six weeks until he makes that visit to Kentucky. I, the way I see it, I've got six weeks to get him signed. If I can get him signed before that visit to Kentucky, then I might be able to. Well, that's really my only chance because once he once he makes that visit to Kentucky, they'll probably sign him. So um, it's kind of a race against time right now. Uh, my opponent is not really so much Kentucky as it is time. And the lead is only 460. So We'll see after this week if Kentucky starts gaining ground again. I, I could just be, you know, out of luck. Um, close to signing this guy, I feel. Um, 
UAB just down 3,500 points. McCarty, the right receiver. He's another decent receiver that would give me a little depth there. Also, I do have a need. So, But obviously, as you can tell, I've also dropped a lot of points only because I don't think I need to put much towards him. Uh, I've got that big lead. Any second now, he's going to sign. Um, Ross Bryant is uh, – I now am in the lead for him. And as I – he was – he visited. And obviously, as you can see, like with – as same as with Hamilton, I jumped into the lead. So I'm hoping to hang on to him. Um, you know, he's – these are not players who are going to push me into the top 10, but they'll hopefully push me near the top of the Sun Belt. Um, Ross has really turned into a battle. Um, still have hopes to sign in, but as you can see, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm increasing my lead on these other schools, but, uh, it's all, you know, you can see they're all that they're all going after him. Um, so it's, it's a situation where I can't, I'm not, you know, I'm not really worried. Um, but it's a situation I'm monitoring. Um, oh, and I do need to bring him in. I'm going to bring him in for this week against Arkansas State. Didn't realize that I had not – that he was ready to visit. Um, so, and then Harris, center. Um, feel good about him. I'm, I'm, I am I'm, want to sign – I have a need at center. So, I, even though I've got that big lead, I'm going to put everything to him until he signs. Um, so, that kind of sums up. Let's look at – did I – yeah, so I have three guys that I need to schedule for visits. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to bring them all in this week. I, I make my visits as early as possible. The only exception would be if I'm playing a team that I know I cannot be successful against. So, um, yeah, cause we got this, that'll make the game against Arkansas State kind of a recruiting game. Um, so that's it. I, I, you know, top, we can look at the top classes, but it, obviously it's way early in the signing period. I'm 27th, which is, you know, I would be, I would love to finish with a 27th class, but you know, you look here and I mean, come on, Western Michigan 19th, you know that this is going to change a lot before we get to the end of the season. Um, number one, Alabama, no big surprise there. They've already got two five stars and four, four star signs. They are just absolutely restocking. Uh, Texas A&M is up there. That's a little bit of a surprise, I guess. Clemson, third. Uh, Tennessee, um, having a strong year recruiting so far. Uh, LSU is up there. Florida, Texas, North Carolina, USC, and UCLA. So even though it's early, these you know these are all teams that you would not be too surprised. Maybe North Carolina is a little high, but really they've only signed five three stars. So um, that's a quick look at recruiting. Um, uh, just a glance at the uh, Arkansas State game here uh it's mostly even uh, i guess they have a slight overall uh edge looking at their points per game well first of all let's look at their schedule because that'll tell us a lot like they so they went to memphis lost um we got a win against an fcs team gave michigan a game before falling 31 28 and then they did beat tulsa so they've kind of had some mixed results um but when we look at their stats, you kind of have to take into account they've played an FCS team. Like they, you see, they're 32 points a game. That's pretty high for us, and we're we've only averaging about 16, so that's low. Um, looking at their total defense, they're 81 in total defense, so that should bode well for us. Hopefully, um, their pass defense is 103rd, and that you know again we are a passing team, so. Statistics wise that, um, you know, we have reason to hope uh, looking at the um, uh, yeah, our schedule right there. We've lost three of our four games. Uh, good news was that Kansas, we did play a little better. Uh, looking at statistics, their um, quarterback, uh, 69 of 134. That is right at 50 percent. 871 yards, 10 touchdowns, only two picks. So that's a pretty good ratio there. Uh, rushing 30, 388 yards. That's not quite 100 yards a game, but he's averaging five yards a carry. And he does have four touchdowns, so about a touchdown a game. Um, receiving 200 yards. Their top receiver has 200 yards. That's like 50 a game. Yeah, 51.5. So, um, yeah, D uh, hopefully our defense can keep us in the game and, and we can do enough on offense to win. But it's a big game. It's our first Sun Belt game uh, of the season. And, you know, we want to start strong. Um, the Arkansas State, uh, I don't remember where they were picked. Let me think. 
think I actually have it here in front of me somewhere. Yeah, so the Sun Belt, they were picked to finish fourth. We were picked seventh. So um, if we're gonna if we're gonna overachieve in the conference, this would be a game that we kind of need to win. It's a home game. So so with that said, I'm gonna wrap. I'm gonna end this episode here. Uh, make sure you tune in the next episode for the game against Arkansas State. Hopefully, we can start strong, and we will see you then.